cool. Yeah, so this is all about you. This podcast is about you and your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. Dope. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So uh, I did read you are from the, uh, you're originally from Wisconsin. Is that correct? Yeah, born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah, so um, I, I love Wisconsin. My, uh, my whole family is still back there. Um, it's definitely like growing up in the Midwest definitely instilled a lot of um, things about my personality and who I am, but also the things that I value. You know, like I remember being a kid and listening to my favorite albums, you know, on my headphones and I'd be laying in this huge field like looking up at the clouds with all these trees around me. And so it's just like having um, nature was a huge part of, of my life growing up and just the good old Midwestern value. Sure. It's amazing yeah. to have a space. I mean, yes. I'm from, I'm from San Diego and, you know, just South of LA and it's pretty <laughs> congested there, so to speak. Like there's no, the houses don't have a lot of yard or anything. I remember going back to my my grandfather's house, he, he was in Ohio, Cleveland. He had like a huge backyard and like, it's just like a totally different like lifestyle, I feel like. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I, after I left Wisconsin, I moved to New York and lived there for 10 oh. years and now I'm in downtown LA. So I'm like, <laughs> you went, went from space to yeah. a different kind of space. <laughs> um, sure, sure. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely was amazing to, to have that space growing up and just like, you know, to be able to walk through the woods and dream and, and, um, all that was, was amazing. That is very cool. How did you get into music? I did read that you had quite a musical family, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So my grandpa, my grandma and grandpa had 10 kids. And so I had, wow. you know, 10 aunts and uncles. Is that mom or dad's side? Mom's side. But my okay. dad actually had, um, nine brothers, brothers and sisters, or eight brothers and sisters. So it's nine <laughs> on my dad's side and 10 on my 10 mom's, on your side. mom's. Wow. So I have like a million cousins um, sure. <laughs> and uh, so my, my grandpa was a musician on my mom's side and he played piano and organ and accordion actually. Wow. And so he had all of his 10 kids learn instruments growing up. So when I was growing up, you know, all my aunts and uncles played different instruments. My uncle Tim went to Eastman for piano and my uncle Tom <laughs> went to um, Juilliard for trombone. And so it's wow. just like, I was surrounded by music. And so um, me and my cousins, my cousins and I would always sing around the piano um, every Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so music has always felt like family to me in that way. Wow. What, what did mom play or what did she play? My mom played violin growing okay. up and a little piano. And she actually just picked up a cello a couple of years ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So. so she's still playing. Did she pursue it like as a career? No, um, just. Uh, she actually became a teacher, um, uh, but not, definitely not music teacher though. Not music teacher. Okay. No. Um, but my mom and dad actually met uh, in a musical in high school in their senior really? year. <laughs> yeah, my dad wow. is actually not very musical, like or artistic. I think he's he's really creative. But when he was in high school, his senior year, he was like, I think I'm going to do a musical just for fun. Um, actually, I think it was, it was maybe just a play, but anyway, so they, they were the leads in the play, wow. the romantic leads. And then they ended up falling in love and the rest Very. of history. <laughs> <laughs> and then grace came, but, um, and then me. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. That, well, that's pretty, he must have had some talent. I mean, going from not really having a background and it's the lead is, this I super know, yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. I think he was just as surprised. Yeah, for sure. Okay, wow. So very musical family. Singing always. You said you talked about singing at uh, you know Thanksgiving or whatever. Uh, what was the first instrument you learned to play? Um, I took piano lessons when I was little, and then I switched over to flute, and I played flute for a while, um, like and then through, I learned. Were you playing flute as like a marching band type instrument or no? No, it was just like the, when we were, I think I was probably in like fourth grade or something, you know, mm -hmm. we, we had like the music teacher come into the class and was like, okay, so now you guys all get to pick an instrument, what's oh, the right. instrument that you want to pick? And I was like, flute. <laughs> okay. And so I took flute for a few years. Um, randomly, I've actually met a lot of singers lately and a lot of singer friends who have told me that they also took flute growing up. So I don't know if it's like, a, it's, which is weird because you can't like sing and play flute. So I don't know why we all. <laughs> pick that instrument but um 
but yeah, and then um, started playing get a little guitar in high school um, when I started writing songs. And now I don't play any of them very well. <laughs> I mostly just sing, but I have this vision, like I'm going to be a really good guitar player and piano player at some point in my life. I just don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's always time. There's always time. There's always but, time. Um, well, that's fascinating. So you started writing songs in high school. That's when you started writing your own original songs. Yeah, so I actually really randomly got introduced to Richard Marks. I don't know if you remember him. Um, he's an artist from like the 80s. And he had the that name song. name sounds um, familiar. Whatever you go, whatever oh, you okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now I know like, exactly that is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and he, I don't know if he, I think maybe not like a one hit wonder, but that was like his big, big Major song hit. that, you know, got him the, the mansion and all the things. Right, right, right. Um, and so like we had a friend of the family who knew him and you know somehow I ended up like meeting him in Chicago and wow. uh he you know I went to ask him advice and whatever and at that point I was like I think I was a junior in high school and I was really just focusing on singing not really writing and he was like you know you have a great voice and all these things but you should really think about um becoming a writer because that's where you're going to discover yourself as an artist so that week I picked up a guitar and started writing and so I owe my writing journey to Richard Marks which I'm very proud of <laughs> how random I would have been Super <laughs> yeah that's so, so cool random. though <laughs> yeah I, I should like DM him or something and be like I wonder if he's on Instagram I don't know I haven't really thought about hitting him up but I should I should find a way to Richard Marks Richard Marks are you listening to this you, know, you let's, should. Let's <laughs> I bet you he'd be so stoked, especially, I mean, with the success you've had as, as a songwriter. I mean, you have a Grammy Award. <laughs> I mean, it would be fun. We could write like <laughs> a really epic song together. That would be so cool. It'd be like very full circle. I that would it. be. That would be awesome. Yeah, you should feature on your next record. I'm down. I'm very down. <laughs> okay, so uh, you start writing songs in, in high school, and then how does it progress? Like, do you start showing these songs to people? Do you start performing out? Like, what was, like, the next kind of stepping yeah. stone? Yeah, I mean, I the first song I wrote and recorded was actually for my friend who had lost her dad. And so I oh, remember, wow. uh, like, sitting in the car with her and just, like, playing it for her for the first time and, like, like experiencing the reaction of like the person that I wrote the song for, like, um, you know, liking it and, and feeling like moved by it. It was kind of this like validation of like, okay, this, this like, I, I, I really want to write songs for other people, you know, write songs about my own stories, but other people's stories, but always so that the song can um, be something for them. Like the song mm -hmm. is always going to be very personal to me, whatever the song is, obviously but I wanted to make sure that I wrote songs that were universal so that people could apply their own stories to them so that um, the song could become a part of their life in whatever way they need the song to be a part of their life. Wow. Okay. Was it, that yeah. must've been a pretty difficult, uh, you know, first attempt at the song. I mean, to write it for your, for your friend whose parent passed away. I mean, that's a pretty, pretty big one. Yeah. It kind of felt like, it was just like the timing where I felt like, okay, this is going to be like the thing that I can give to her. Like, this is like, you know, what, what can I do for her? Like uh -huh. it's this. And so wow. it, it felt like the, um, my attempt at, at helping. <laughs> sure. Um, sure. And I think, you know, I don't, I don't know how much it helped her or not, but I think in that moment, it was definitely kind of this, this like light bulb went on in my head like you know like like music to me I, I want it to be um not necessarily healing for people but but again just like I said before like something that can be their own like it's yeah. like little gifts that I can give out right. um, and like that's what I can offer as as an artist wow and did you continue with that I mean I mean obviously you continued with the songwriting but like what was your next attempt did you try to like find another relatable topic? Like how did you continue on with your songwriting career? Well, I ended up, so I uh, went to NYU after I graduated high school. Um, oh, wow. and I ended up starting a few bands with some friends in New York and it was just, writing just became like a practice, you know? Like mm -hmm. my the songs that I wrote in my freshman year of college were probably like horrible, <laughs> but just the process of of trying things out, like writing about, 
you know, the relationships that worked out or didn't work out or writing about just all the different stories and things that I was going through and what other people were going through. And I just started learning my style and learning what worked for me and, and just becoming a better writer through writing, but also like through studying other writers, like Joe, I'm a huge fan of Joni Mitchell um, mm -hmm. and Frank Ocean is probably my favorite songwriter of all time, which is like the way that a writer like Frank Ocean, like uses like, metaphors and, and and different references and stuff within his songs to like mm -hmm. make comments about different things I just I love studying all of his lyrics and trying to learn like okay how can I how can I write in a way that um is universal like I said before but also is like extremely personal mm -hmm. um like how honest can I be in my writing um, sure. but then also how do I like attach it to different references in history and and make it feel like um like just like a good piece of writing. Like it, was right, just, it was just a journey of studying writing, which also included like reading more books and like mm -hmm. le learning from writers who weren't um, songwriters and, and trying to just uh, increase my vocabulary and all those things. Right. Um, and then I would perform at the bitter end a lot in New York. And that's kind of where I like kind of honed my performing skills. And I grew up singing in a gospel choir when I was younger and like, I always love singing live, especially in church with the gospel choir, because you got this um, instant reaction from people. Mm -hmm. And and it felt like this experience of um, sharing music together in, in this, in a physical space was, was something that I loved. So yeah, I kept performing live and then all those things led me to random big <laughs> opportunities, like singing mm -hmm. on Oprah and, and yeah. other things that kind of like started um, I would say like getting me into the industry side of, of music. I want to back up for a second. How did you, did you go to NYU for music? Yeah. So I actually auditioned uh, for the musical theater program. My oh, freshman okay. year. So through then, the, probably obviously with your, your skills that you had gained through being in the gospel choir, you had, you know, you had, you had experience performing in front of people. And that's where I was kind of confused. I was like, Whoa, did she get Like, how did she get into to NYU, if you had just started writing songs and, you know, I mean, you said what junior year yeah, or like something. Junior, yeah. Junior year. Yeah. I mean, and at that impressive. point, yeah, I, I, um, I was in the musicals in high school and stuff and like being a singer, it, like it wasn't, I, I didn't really know like who I was as an artist yet mm -hmm. or, or again, like as a writer. And I didn't even think of myself as like, necessarily making albums and things like that like I, I was still kind of figuring out like you know I I know that I love to sing and I love singing live you know mm -hmm. like what opportunities exist like oh I guess I should audition for musical theater school I don't right, know right sure. so you know freshman year I did that but then I realized you know like musical theater is not really really what I want to do like I I want to be an artist and I mm -hmm. want to perform you know in clubs and with bands and stuff like that and so after freshman year, I switched into um, Gallatin, which is, which is the School of Individualized Study at NYU. And I mm -hmm. created my own major of like music wow. and songwriting and um, painting actually. So- Oh, is yeah. that your art behind you? Is that yours? Yeah. What? It is. Yep. No way. <laughs> yeah. You're very, very talented. Thank you. I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not only can you write songs and sing and do everything else, but you can paint. <laughs> well, yeah, painting. I always, I like was always the thing that like, um, I didn't take too seriously, like in the best way. Like it was like this, this place where I could go and like not feel judged by myself or anybody because painting, I like was determined to keep painting, um, sort of like, out of the spotlight and just like something that that I could do for me that would help me like continue to grow as an artist within my own space mm -hmm. um but now I actually I, I like sharing my paintings with people and I I actually do a, a twitch stream once a oh, week really? where I like sing and paint and That's I let amazing. um or I ask fans and people to like as they're listening to the music if if they hear or see any colors um like synesthesia vibes uh -huh. um, to tell me and I can like add those colors to the painting and stuff. So it's been really wow. cool. I love that. You're, oh my gosh, those are so incredible. Thank you. I'm Thanks. like trying to <laughs> stare at them on my computer, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. there's like, yeah, yeah, it's fun. I love it. I do like wow. blind self portrait, um, where I just like 
I close my eyes and I like feel the outline of my face. And that gives me like the first sort of um, like on that one, it kind of gives wow. me the first like outline, I guess. Uh -huh. to work with, and then I like start creating a composition around that. So beautiful. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's fan that's This one cool. though is actually, this is Nico Washington. Um, okay. Who's a friend of mine from Chicago. And he did, he painted the cover for my song Mercy with Vic Mensa. And then we oh, OK, poster. I was like, I think I've noticed that I've, I've seen that cover. Maybe I saw it on uh, Spotify or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, so, um, but yeah, Nico is amazing. And we did this really cool thing. We like printed it really big because we did a lyric video where we put all the lyrics on the backside oh, and cool. I like taped them to the see through uh, pane of glass. And then like the painting was created on the other side. So, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's really rad. That's amazing. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So back to your your music career. Is that that's you're a fantastic painter. You always have Thank that you. to fall back on. <laughs> yeah. Hey. You know what? <laughs> no, I've got to just make some NFTs and then like, you know. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. Right on. Okay. Well, you talked about getting on to to Oprah. I did read that you you submitted a video or something like for her karaoke yeah. thing. Or tell me about that. It was called Oprah's Karaoke Challenge, and it was okay. the last season of her um, show. And my friends like were texting me like, "You should just do it. Just like try to get on Oprah." I was like, "Okay." So I <laughs> submitted a video to her website of me singing "Natural Woman," and I remember okay. like when I pressed upload, I like didn't even know if the video went through, and like. I had got, like just missed the deadline or not missed, but just like was right up against the deadline. And, and I kind of just put it out there like, all right, I don't even know if I just applied for that show or not, but like, I don't right. know, we'll see. And then Whatever. like a few weeks later, an Oprah camera crew surprised me in the subway um, system in New York oh uh, with gosh. TV wine and they, they were like, you're going to be on Oprah. And I was like, holy fucking shit. So then, so I don't know if I can swear. You but, can cuss. Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and then yeah a week later I flew out to Chicago and I was singing on the Oprah Winfrey show and it was like so terrifying um but it was amazing and it definitely it like kind of was the the I, I when I was in high school I actually sang on Chacha Mati Paolo which was um an incredible experience and that was like the first kind of big stage that I sang on uh -huh. and sort of like began to open doors in the industry but then singing on Oprah obviously like really started getting me into like the label world and I started meeting mm -hmm. with with different labels in New York and it kind of like started that part of my journey of like really becoming like a professional uh, musician and things like okay. that wow yeah. well I'm, so they surprised you so like the camera crew just showed up they okay that's kind of like how did they know you how did they know where you're gonna be like yeah, stalked Oprah, you for like a week yeah Oprah's watching all of us at all that's times. crazy I, you know that. I didn't um, <laughs> they coordinated with my uh my roommate so oh. <laughs> yeah I had to put like in the, in the application I had to put like you know a family member or like some I had they had like they needed like another point of contact and so I think they reached out to whatever number I put down which like led me led them to my roommate or something I don't know so wow. she like coordinated with Opus camera crew and actually right before we were going down into the subway system because she was being super weird she was like you know we have to go to this you know place uptown like please come with me blah 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 and I was like I'm like so busy I need to do homework whatever right. and she, and so and I was like she's fine like whoa aggressive and um <laughs> right when we were on the top of the steps about to go down she was like okay I have to tell you like you're about to walk into like Oprah's camera crew is about to surprise you. <laughs> like, what? What the fuck? Like I, and it was like so surreal and weird. And um, yeah, that was that. That's so funny that she waited to the last minute to actually like spill the. the I know. And then she it, like she held, she kept it secret for so long, and then like yeah. two seconds before she, she I think she felt hang. like guilty. Like she was like, I don't know, I can't do this to you. This is too weird. Like. <laughs> you're getting ambushed right now um, that's so funny <laughs> yeah and she's like we well, have to act surprised i was like wait what what's going you're on like, yeah, yeah. And, you're yeah, still in like, shock oh. from the top of the staircase obviously I know. so i walked in kind of like uh like i it was it was weird but it was awesome and i got to side hug oprah and i you know ended up <laughs> writing a thank you note to oprah like dear oprah thank you for having me on your show and i always wondered if she got it so that's amazing 
<laughs> yeah. Maybe Richard Marks, me, and Oprah can all hang out. You guys, yeah, someday. that'd be quite the, quite, <laughs> quite the hang. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, yeah, so Oprah, being on Oprah obviously opened up some doors for you. And yeah, yeah. When, when, like, from there, did you, were you talking with labels or like, did you have material to show, you know, because you, you did a cover. So were people approaching you like, oh, like, you know, what, what is it, was it kind of like, uh, I guess I would uh, try to compare it to like a kid now on, you know, TikTok or something that their song blows up. Then it's like, hey, like, I just saw you. Like, what what's going on? Was it kind of like one of those situations? Yeah, it was. It was like, okay, you did this big thing. Like, let's talk. And I think right. I wasn't really ready at that point to, I, ha I still was like discovering myself as an artist and I had original music, but it just wasn't, ready for my moment and mm -hmm. um so it it was cool and that it like introduced me to a lot of people in the industry and got me connections and stuff but it wasn't the right time to actually like um sign with anyone and, and there it's not like i was getting like off a ton of offers and stuff it was just kind of like one of those like oh we're gonna like start paying attention to you now like this is interesting like like who are you <laughs> mm -hmm. and and um and so from there you know that's when i really began to like start thinking through like, hey, I want to make an album and like, who do I want to work with? And I and I went through a few different iterations of like figuring out, you know, what my sound was and working with a few different producers and stuff. But when, let's see, in 2015, um, when uh, Surf came out by The Social Experiment, Mm -hmm. uh, someone sent me the project and that was kind of the first moment when I heard surf and when I heard acid rap by chance I was like okay who is producing this music because this is who I want to work with like this music lights me up like like music did when I was a kid like th this feels like singing in the gospel choir this this feels like everything that I love about music um, before like the industry started putting like pressure and expectation on me like meeting or like hearing acid rap and, and surf and other stuff that these guys had produced, like just turned on the light of like creation in my brain and my soul. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of started on a process of trying to find those guys and see if they wanted to work together. And it was kind of crazy because I hit up some friends. I was like, do you guys know these people called the social experiment, like Peter Cottontail and Nate Fox and Nico Siegel, or he went by Donnie Trumpet at the time. Mm -hmm. They sounded like like Disney characters to me. I right, like, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't know anyone who knew them, but a few months later, I was in LA, and a buddy of mine texted me, and he was like, "Hey, I'm in a studio, or I'm in a session. You should come through." And he didn't say who he was with. He just like was like, "Here's the address. Come through." So I showed up at the studio. I ended up meeting these guys named Nate and Nico. Like, did not put two and two together that like it was Donnie Trumpet and Nate Fox. Like, sure. I, I didn't know what they looked like. I just Anyway, so they pulled up a track and asked me if I want to sing on it. I was like jumping out of my skin to sing on it. I freaking loved it. Same feeling as when I heard Acid Rap and Surf. Still hadn't put two and two together, but um, I like hopped in the booth, sang my heart out. It was just like so exciting and amazing. And I got out of the vocal booth and that's when I asked them like, yo, so who are you guys? Like, are you in a band or what do you do? And that's when they were like, oh, we go by the social experiment. And, you know, we work with Chance and the rapper and... I go by Donnie Trumpet and whatever. And I was like, holy shit, I've been wanting to meet you guys. And like the universe just brought us together. And wow. I asked them if they wanted to produce an album for me. And that was kind of like the start of just like the crazy journey that ensued all the way till today, right. <laughs> where the album is finally coming out now in 2021. <laughs> so yeah, it's been, okay. it's, been a, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> wow. Okay. So that from that first experience, you know, singing with them, um, is that, were you working on this record? I mean, so tell me about the record. So you, I mean, you wrote a song that Chance the Rapper ended up using on his first record. Yeah. Or the mixtape, which got a Grammy. So mm -hmm. how did, how, tell me about that process before we get into like this new stuff that you're doing. Yeah, I mean, so the start of, of working on music with Nate Nico was, we started in the spring of 2016. And initially we were like, you know, let's work for a few weeks and then we'll put out a project a few weeks later and like, see see what happens um uh -huh. but as we started working on the music like it was almost like just getting on a 
on an airplane or a roller coaster that like was taking off and it like we didn't really have a choice of like where it was going it was just, like get ready for a journey like we're about to like <laughs> go on a magical ride right. and um you know because when chance walked in like that was within the first week of working together and oh, he wow. heard the song that we were working on and and it ended he asked if it could be all we got with him and kanye and so that so that kind of just like turned everything into like whoa like okay now like i'm working with chance and like i have a song mm -hmm. with kanye and like just things started like i said it just became this like magical ride and it sort of um it like it stretched out the process you know when when we when nate and nico and peter and i started working together or when when all the cool things started happening with the music we were like okay maybe we should like take our time with this and just like let it see where it leads us instead of us leading the project like let's let the songs i i sometimes i call it like little breadcrumbs that like uh -huh. every song that we created was like this little breadcrumb on the journey that like led us to the next thing and so it was a process of letting the music guide me which ended up leading me to releasing the first single from the project in 2017, um, which is called More Than Friends. Mm -hmm. And um, be, that song kind of blew up and John Mayer ended up randomly tweeting it out, which made it blow up more. And, and so that led, led, led me to get signed to Capitol Records. And so that okay. was kind of like part of the thing that stretched everything out too, was like, okay, now we're going to release this project through Capitol. Like, uh, just the process of getting onboarded to the label and like getting the team marketing team together and like i think capital time, was, i'm sure yeah it just it just is like a pro even just the process of like getting the paperwork done you know like i think capital so we yeah we released the single in, in november of 2017 and then the president of anr came to see me at a show in january of 2018 and then I went on tour with Chance in South America that spring, which like, wow. again, just these things like kept happening that like, you know, on the one hand, like made the album take longer, but on the other hand, like put, like, I got to do things that helped me grow as an artist and also huh. discover myself more and more. It was almost, I felt like the, when I started working on the album, they were, like the album magical universe people or whatever, <laughs> were like, okay, now we have to put you on a journey to like, really find yourself before you finish this album so like buckle up and like let's go um and so yeah and then once I was on Capitol it wasn't until we didn't sign the deal until like May of 2018 and then didn't and then got or onboarded through that summer and then released my first single with Capitol that was uh, was a part of the album in the fall of 2018 and that was Mercy with Vic and then um Mercy didn't do as well as Capitol had hoped and you know, it kind of like made everything stall again. <laughs> okay. And so it was about a year that I couldn't release any music after that. And then um, ended up parting ways with Capital in December of 2019. And that was kind of like the best thing that could have happened because it was not only like d did the freedom of leaving the label feel amazing, although I really loved being on Capital and all the people were amazing. It just, mm -hmm. it wasn't the right place for me ultimately, but um, but like the freedom that I felt when I got released, it was like, oh my God, now I can like be myself again and just like create the art that I wanna make. But it also uh -huh. like sparked this dr drive in me and like reignited this creativity, like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm about to go crazy with the stuff that I'm, I'm gonna make. Cause I feel like I've been like held back and now I yeah. can just, like go for it. And that's when I, but I knew when I got dropped from Capitol, I knew like, you know, before I like go back to the album, because because I knew that I needed to bring the album to today. Like, you know, it had right. gone through because you had been working on it for journey. so long. Yeah. Yeah. And it still wasn't finished, but there was like, you know, a group of songs that I thought was going to be on the album. But then I was like, you know, I need to now tell stories about what I've gone through. And like, uh -huh. I need to complete this journey of like, coming home to myself is the way that I kind of looked at it. But I was like, first I need to write an EP, <laughs> like get some song, get some like stuff out of the way. And so I ended up that's making what, an EP with Louis Elastic. And that was how, one. how did we get here? So you put that EP out in between. Okay, so this record really started. So this is the, the albums coming out is the one that you really began back yeah, when you the, guys all first met. 
yeah, the first single was 2017. So it's basically Whoa. been, I've been releasing singles from the album sort of since 2017. 2017. So one single in 2017 and then the next singles in um, 2021, I guess. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Whoa. And then with an EP in between and with a single with capital in between. So, and some other like other singles in that span. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. But Wow, that's well. That's great that you were able to. I mean, with the deal with Capital, that they didn't say, "Oh, we own the record." Yeah, it was amazing. Honestly, they they you know were like, "Here, you like." It was kind of like, "Sorry, we're dropping you. Here's the album." Like, bye. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's like unheard cool. of. Usually, you'd think that'd be like, "Okay, we're gonna take this, and you can start from scratch. See you later." No, and yeah. So like, I feel so grateful that. I still get to release the project and like even like through all of the ups and downs of, of the past few years like the thing that i was was really determined to do was like to protect the album through it like i mm -hmm. felt like it was like this baby that i needed to like keep um innocent in a way guarded <laughs> and, like, and like not let the anything else that was going on like affect the the like purity of what we were trying to make um mm -hmm. and so that happened and it kind of like you know, made it through the storm and now it's finally ready to be released into the world. And um, yeah, it's actually funny. Someone from an executive from Capital, which I feel bad if he hears this, he probably won't, but I won't <laughs> say his name, but he, a year after I got dropped, he actually called me to like catch up. And he was just, I was like, oh sure. Yeah, whatever. And so we yeah. were like talking and, and eventually he's like, so how is everything, how are you feeling on Capital these days? And I was like, Aww. oh, I got dropped like a year ago. <laughs> um, so basically a lot of people still thought I was on the label, I guess. But, um, but anyways, it, again, I was, I was grateful for like what I learned being on uh -huh. the label, but, but very, very happy to be releasing this project independently, which is how it sure. started and through um, United Masters, which has been a really dope distribution partner for me amazing that's that's so again i'm so like shocked that you were able to to leave with your project in hand you know what i mean yeah <laughs> you hear real. so many stories where you, artists will just kind of get dropped and they're like oh yeah by the way we also own all of your the recordings that you've done for the past year or whatever it's been so that's great Very that you're able wild. to take that yeah i mean yeah. wow um yeah. well so i mean you just said that all happened in december 2019 obviously three months later, the world shuts down. Where exactly. were you when that all happened? And like, was that kind of like a spark? I mean, you said you you're ready to just start writing. You have, now you have time to sit around and write. Is that kind of what that project became was like a COVID record or no, the, the, yeah. the EP? Yes and no. I mean, going back to like the concept of space, like the cool thing about the pandemic for me, which I don't know if that sentence, the cool thing about the pandemic, but right. what I got out of that time was space and time to like mm -hmm. really sit and think through like, okay, how do I bring this home? And like, what songs do I want to keep on the album? What songs do I want to switch out? What new songs do I want to write? And, you know, I, I had worked on the EP from like January of 2020. And then I released that in May of 2020. So once I kind of got that like out of the way mm -hmm. um, creatively, that's when I started shifting focus back to like, okay, album, let's okay. figure this out. And the, basically the first move that I made was call Nate Fox again. and was like, yo, can I come to the studio? Like the place that it all began and mm -hmm. like, let's, let's write a song. Maybe it'll be on the album, maybe it won't. And we wrote this song called Other Side in the summer of 2020. And that was kind of this, like song like okay now I feel like originally that was going to be the last song on the album but I ended up making it the second to last but that was a song that like kind of creatively just like lit me up again where I was like okay cool like now I feel like the, the project is starting to come together because this song is really capturing a theme of resilience that I'm trying to like continue to weave into this project so, like the chorus of other side is like I know life's been kicking you while you're down and I know it's been hard, but just know we all get by tricking our minds. If you don't jump, you're never going to fly. It'll all make sense on the other side. Like we're all that. just figuring this out as we go. And like, all you can do is jump and, and it's all going to make sense once you land on the other side. That's amazing. That's amazing. You've released a couple songs off, off the record. Uh, the most recent ones played yourself. I did have a chance to hear 
uh, the one that has Chance the Rapper on it, which is coming out in a couple of weeks. An amazing song. Through the uh, Through the Fire, I think is what it's called. Yeah, yeah. So Through yeah. the Fire actually came out in March and then Played Yourself just came out last week. But oh, sorry. Both, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, but both, <laughs> both are on the album. Then Feels Like Heaven was um, the first single of this year. And then More Than Friends is on the album too. So um, yeah, it's been really fun. Through the Fire's out. I have heard that one, which is amazing. And then the most recent one is Played Yourself. That just came out on the 30th. So like a few days yeah. ago, right? Yeah. Got yeah. it. Okay. So talk to me about Played Yourself. Played Yourself was my sort of like healing anthem of like some crazy things that I went through over the past couple of years and, and was kind of like the song that I needed to write to step into this like new sense of confidence and kind of like you know what, like I can do this. Like, I don't, I don't need like the approval that I for so long, like sought from, from people that I thought like knew better than me or like, I think especially like kind of growing up in the Midwest, like I definitely was, a, had like a people pleasing part of myself where I, I always wanted to like get an A in class or like check that box of like, okay, I like you approve of me and played yourself was kind of breaking free of like, I don't, cause one, one thing that, you know, that I sometimes would fall into is like working with people or, or um, in relationships, like I, I could, I found myself being um, sort of like manipulated through me wanting to um, impress people. Like they, I can people could kind of use that part of me to like manipulate me and played yourself was like, you know what? Like, I'm not going to let myself fall into these traps anymore. Like I got this shit and um, I'm ready to like be the confident, you know, assertive person that, that I know that I can be and, and let me step into this place of power and, and honestly like self love, like played mm -hmm. yourself is, is weirdly like a song of self love <laughs> ultimately. I love it. Well, how many, so the new record's coming out next month. Well, how many songs are from the, like the original sessions that you guys had and how many were added later, like over the course of the last, you know, year? Um, it's kind of like half and half. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah. So uh, I can't like think exactly right now. Yeah. No, <laughs> but totally. yeah, it's sort of half and half. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So it was like, a, yeah, really like a full circle moment for you. Totally. Yep. That's so incredible. I can't wait to, to hear it. I know you're talking earlier about, um, you know, when earlier performing, you know, performing in your, in the gospel choir and how like live music really, you know, has a feeling and pulls people together. And now we're in this situation where <laughs> no one's playing live yet. Is that right. going to be <laughs> a strange way to release the record or have you not really thought about that? Well, hopefully we're going to uh, tour in the fall is the plan. So oh, amazing. Okay. That for that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I actually have like kind of adapted into the virtual performing world a little bit and just like embraced it. And, and that's been <laughs> kind of fun. Um, but I am so ready to get back on stage. And I, I think that it's going to work out that we'll get to tour in the fall and then we'll get to tour the album. Um, but no matter what, whenever touring does open up, I definitely will be touring this album. Like, even if it's, a year from now like i i want to play it live so we're gonna make it happen <laughs> that's amazing yeah yeah you were talking about twitch you would you'd sing your songs and, and you're doing your paintings as well so have you had yeah. a chance to try or perform any aside from the singles like have done anything um, like releasing them as far as like testing them out to your fans or anything yeah um well some of the songs like from the earlier iteration of the journey um i played when i opened for pj morton Oh, okay. and story um and so i definitely had been i actually will sometimes fans will hit me up and be like yo when are you releasing you know uh, this song from the tour and i'm like i promise it's coming out soon <laughs> um but i haven't i haven't really like shown people too many of the songs from like the kind of the, the second ones. iteration yet so i'm excited very cool well thank you so much grace for hanging out with me i really appreciate it of course thanks for having me it was so fun yeah. talking to you I have one more question for you. Yeah. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. My advice would be um, to just keep going, <laughs> to let every time, every stumble that you would describe as a stumble or a fall can be a lesson and a moment for growth. And so everything that's meant for you will come to you and it might take a little bit longer than you think, but 
know that sometimes the music needs to lead you down the path um, to help you find who you are as an artist. So I would just say patience, keep going and uh, continue to follow what lights you up and don't follow the things that um, make you feel unnecessary pressure or um, expectation or things like that. Just like really truly follow your bliss as cliches that is like follow the things that light you up and um, see what you create.